have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Come on, everybody, begin to clap your hands and let's praise the Lord. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning time. Yeah, yeah. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more heartache. This is the day I've got joy. I've got joy.
And now it's time for our Faithful Financial Moments with Sister Sharon Richard. This is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moment. For virtually every major purchase that we want to make, whether we are buying a home, a car, or simply attempting to get a new credit card, someone will seek to evaluate our credit worthiness before granting us additional credit. For so many years, the basis for credit scores was a bit of a mystery, but now, although we may not fully understand our scores, we have the ability to request our credit scores at no cost to us. Credit scores predict how likely you are to pay your bills. There are three major credit scores, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Generally, scores range from as low as 300 to a high of 850. Scores of 750 and above are considered excellent. In recent years, they've developed what they call the FICO score, which is based on the information from the three major credit card uh, scores, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Ever wondered how your credit score is calculated and how you can improve your score? There are five factors which help to determine your credit score. Number one, how you have paid your bills in the past with emphasis on the most recent activity. That accounts for 35% of your score. Paying your bills on time is the greatest way to drive a solid credit score. Paying bills late, having accounts sent to collections, or declaring bankruptcy will all negatively impact this aspect of your score. Number two, the amount of money that you owe and the amount of available credit represents 30% of your score. Generally, your goal should be to use less than 30% of your total credit on any given credit card. Creditors believe that people who use higher levels of their credit lines are not good managers of their finances and therefore tend to be a less attractive credit risk. Number three, your length of credit history accounts for 15% of your credit score. The longer that you have had credit, particularly with the same creditors, the more points you get. Number four, your mix of credit accounts for 10% of your credit score. Traditionally, people that have a richer mix of credit that include some installment loans related to cars and mortgages and credit cards tend to be better credit risk and are rewarded in their credit score. Number five, new credit application activity accounts for the final 10% of your credit score. Rate shopping for the best mortgage or car loan is a plus, but on the other hand, seeking new credit after accounts have been sent to collections are considered cause for concern. God does not want us to become a slave to debt. And when we have healthy habits in managing our expenses, our credit score will likely reflect that. If you desire to purchase a home or even purchase a car at a reasonable interest rate, taking care of your credit score is an important part of ensuring that you are able to realize your dream. This is Sharon Richard with your Faithful Financing Moment. Up next, Nina Taylor with Your Gospel News, followed by the Pastor's Corner with Bishop Ernest E. Richard, Jr. and Pastor Ander Henderson and Company. Hi, everybody. I'm Nina Taylor, and here is this week's Gospel News. Worship leader, recording artist, songwriter, and producer, Israel Holton, became involved full-time in ministry in 1989. From the start, he looked to overcome cultural and denominational barriers. With this idea, Israel formed his New Breed Ministries in 1995. Touring extensively brought the ministry's powerful and diverse sound to churches around the U.S., while Israel's two 1997 releases, Whisper It Loud and Way of the World, kicked off his recording career. New Season from 2001 became the first Israel and New Breed release and their first release on Sony. That label also issued Real in 2002, Live from Another Level in 2004, Alive in South Africa from 2005 featured a performance in Cape Town, South Africa in front of 8,000 attendees. 
followed by Love God, Love People. The London Sessions in 2010. In 2012, Integrity issued Decade, a two-disc, 26-track career overview. Halton and his group continue to document their travels with Covered, Alive in Asia, released in 2015. Award-winning gospel performer Martha Munizzi was born in Central Florida to a religious musical family who had Martha and her twin sister Mary singing and touring the country by the age of eight. Her first album, 2002's Say the Name, came out on Point to Point and was followed up with a pair of self-released records. The Best is Yet to Come in 2003 and When He Came in 2004, both of which debuted high on Billboard's gospel charts. In 2006, Martha Munizzi was nominated for a Grammy for Best Traditional Soul Gospel Album and also released a successful CD set entitled No Limits. Live, which debuted at number one on the gospel charts and remained there for six weeks, in addition to ministering with several popular Christian ministries like Joel Osteen, Benny Hinn, and Joyce Meyer, she also collaborated and performed with a variety of artists like Yolanda Adams, Risen, Israel Halton, and Donna Richardson Joyner. Her next project, another live album and DVD called Change the World, arrived in 2008, followed by 2011's self-produced studio album Make It Loud, which featured the debut of her daughter Danielle Munizzi, among others. The Gospel News will salute African-American-owned businesses throughout the month of October. That means that you'll be hearing about some of the very first African-American entrepreneurs in American history. Founded in 1881, E.E. E. Ward Moving and Storage is the oldest African-American-owned business in the United States. What started as a stop on the Underground Railroad has flourished into one of the most respected and trusted moving companies in the country. Joe and George Johnson's hair care company, Johnson Products, becomes the first black-owned business on the American Stock Exchange. Reginald F. Lewis, the head of TLC Beatrice International, becomes the first African-American to own a company with $1 billion in sales. John H. Johnson was the founder of the Johnson Publishing Company in 1942. He rose from poverty to millionaire status by the age of 31. In 1982, he became the first African American to appear on the Forbes 400. Here's a list of the top 10 cities for African American owned businesses. Number 10, Birmingham, Alabama. 9, Augusta, South Carolina. 8, Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana. 7. Mobile, Alabama 6. Baton Rouge, Louisiana 5. Atlanta, Sandy Springs, Roswell, Georgia 4. Huntsville, Alabama 3. Jackson, Mississippi 2. Montgomery, Alabama And the number one city for African-American-owned businesses is Memphis, Tennessee because Memphis has the highest number of black-owned businesses in the United States with just over 43%. Additionally, it scored well for the cost of of living. Here's this week's top gospel songs by Kiara Sheard and Karen Clark Sheard with Something Has to Break. Four, Melvin Christel III, Wonderful Is Your Name. Three, Damon Little, Stand Up. Two, Tamala Man, Help Me. And our new number one song comes from Todd Delaney with Revelation 4. Well, that's your top songs, your top 10 best cities for African American owned businesses, and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. And thank God for you, my dear friend, Nina Taylor, for your faithfulness. Of course, the lovely, talented, vivacious First Lady Sharon Richard for her faithful financial moments. Welcome. To you, to you, and also to you. This is the Pastor's Corner. I'm Bishop Ernest E. Richard Jr. We thank God for you. Today we have a new month, and before I get too far, 
I want to welcome in my newest co-host. I know she's standing in the wings and waiting to come in and share with us. Please, please, please welcome Pastor Anna Henderson. My dear sister, how are you today? I am so good. This is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and being glad in it. I'm Amen. so glad Amen. to be on tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, we bless God that you're even here today. I know there are probably others that have joined us, but before we get too far into where we are, I do want to do something special. Many of you may not be aware of this, but uh, coming up this weekend, this Saturday, taking place in the city of North Haven, Connecticut, uh, we have the 16th edition of the Hollaback Music Excellence Award. And I invited the president uh, of that award show to come on and take a few minutes and share with us. I want to welcome my brother from another mother, a friend of over 30 plus years, Dr. Jerry Green. How are you today, my brother? Hey, I'm doing good. How you doing, Bishop? God bless you, man, and and the staff at the Pastor's Corner, man. How y'all doing? Well, listen, I could talk about the I could talk about the Hollaback Music Awards. I've been in it with you from the beginning, but who better okay. to talk? the people about the upcoming events, the history of the Hollaback Awards and things of that nature. So what I'm going to do right now is release the mic to you. Tell us a little bit about the Hollaback Gospel Music Excellence Awards as those who are listening by way of TikTok and soon to be Facebook Live will be joining us to hear what God has to say through your, the greatness of your voice. Well, first of all, let me just give honor to God for just being on on this show this evening, right, and give honor to you guys uh, doing a great job. But, yes, the, uh, the Hall of Excellence Award, this is year number 16. Uh, we started, uh, you know, way back at the Belvedere in New Haven. Uh, we had local talent at first. Uh, then we decided, you know, to make it on a national level. So we start bringing in national recording artists. And over the years, we then brought in uh, Dietrich Haddon, uh, Melvin Williams, uh, the Queen of Gospel, Shirley Caesar, Erica Campbell, uh, J.J. Hairston, uh, Jason Nelson, uh, Byron Cage. Last year we had Leandria Johnson to basically a sold-out crowd. And this year we have uh, Kaylin Carr. Uh, she just hosted the Stella Awards. So we're excited this year what God is doing, and we give God all the glory for what's going on in, in Connecticut and uh, for what he's doing for gospel music. Uh like I said, it's going to be in North Haven, Connecticut, at the Best Western uh, Hotel Ballroom. And tickets only $45, and that's a cheap price for Ja'Kalen Carr, $45. We have a red carpet that starts at 5 o'clock, and that's for all the honorees that's being honored and for the uh, recording artists that's going to be performing. So we're excited what God is doing. And like I said, uh, 16 years, uh, we give God the glory. And, and uh, Bishop Ernest, I got to thank you, man. So like you said, you was there from day one as well, man, and I can't do it without you, man. I look forward to having you every year. <laughs> I got to I gotta admit that part. My brother, it has been my honor and my pleasure to have been able to serve the relationships that have been formulated, with, especially with those who are working in the background and those who handle the various parts, Big Don Productions. But we want to give God all glory and honor for the visionary himself, Brother Tony from Tone Productions, Tony Tone Productions. I mean, okay. when he first approached you and gave you the idea and shared with you what he wanted to do, and then you reached out to me, and the rest is history. For 16 yes. years, what people don't realize, Jerry, is the Stellar Awards took almost 21 years before they got to the level that they're at. So we're pressing for the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus, and we're just going to just keep doing what we're doing. But this coming Saturday, you don't want to miss it. Now, you have a wonderful red carpet. Let's talk about the red carpet for a few minutes. This is not no second-rate red carpet. This is top of the line, 
and I've seen other award shows that have come along over the last few years take the time to come in. They've studied what we've done, and they've copied it. And that's, you know, they say imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So, my brother, I'm going to tell you, I'm doing some amazing things with you. Uh, Give us just a little bit of information on the red carpet, who's hosting, you know, and those who might possibly because we always have an all-star cast when it comes to the red carpet. Well, well, first of all, let me just say, uh, just, to, just to talk about what you were saying as well, uh, that was the first thing that we really wanted to, to do to make our award show uh, different than other events because a lot of people wasn't doing the red carpet. So we started that 15 years ago, and now to your point, everybody basically is doing the red carpet. And, and that's just something that we do to give the honorees and all the presenters an opportunity, you know, to be on the red carpet and also that they can they can share what, how God blessed them over the years in ministry as well. So the red carpet is, is something that we're excited about because it, 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 it's, it's the start of the, show, of the show. And once the red carpet is over, that's when we start our award ceremony. But that red carpet is something that people look forward to every year to come on the red carpet and, and they get a chance you know, I'll say that, uh, to really, you know, share, share what, what, what they're doing as well in gospel music. So I'm excited, uh, Bishop. You know, uh, the show going to start at around 6, 10, like we always do. And, and, and the good thing about our, our shows as well, we start on time, and the show is no longer than about maybe two hours. So everybody's home at a decent hour so they can go to church the next day. But in the meantime, God gets the glory. Uh, God is truly blessed over the years and have all them big names to come right, and, and be a part of our uh, uh, awards is great. And one thing, Bishop, you know uh, what we do, every artist that came, they, they got a spotlight award. So, so we made sure that before they left that, that they received an award as well, and that's something they will always remember us by, by giving them something when they came, like Shirley Caesar, Erica Campbell, Melvin Williams, Byron Cage, all of them received a spotlight award when it came to our award show. Amen. Now, I do have some people that are on TikTok, uh, Strictly Business. God bless you. There are several of you up there. I can't see everybody, but address that crowd because, I mean, I, for those of you who may not be able to get into North Haven, Connecticut, is there any way they might be able to possibly – uh, after we've taken care of business right there, maybe catch the latter part of the show, or we, they might catch clips. Is there a, 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 a host site that they can go to where they might be able to catch it? And if not, we can uh, we can arrange that for a later date. Well, well, well first of all, it will be uh, streaming live on our Facebook. All right, well, you know we're gonna do that, and most likely it will be on on the Hollaback website. All right, so so what I can do uh, before you. Before you go, you can uh, uh, put the link on the screen. So if anybody wants to click on the link and, and watch the, the uh, award show later on, they're capable of doing that as well. All right? Because we're, we're, like I said, we're very excited uh, with what, what God is doing, for us, especially in Connecticut, because, you know, it, it's not a whole lot goes on in Connecticut, and we're just proud, you know, to bring some of the biggest names, uh, you know, to, to Connecticut. So that's what I'm, I'm excited about. And I'll say this, and we'll get ready to get into uh, tonight's podcast. Some of the big names that you're talking about, there were quite a few who actually uh, came to the Hollaback Awards in the earlier going. Uh, People are now enjoying people like Lucinda Moore, God Blessed Us, by way of radio as well to launch Deion Kiffin, J.J. Harrison in Youthful Praise, Jonathan DeBose, you know about the drummer used to play for uh, Israel, Mike Clemens. I mean, there is just a grocery list of individuals out of this area and out of this region that God has blessed and ministered and has taken them to the next level. We can't take credit for it, my brother, but the truth of the matter is God used us when he needed us to launch and to make known. I have uh, had conversations with different individuals who have, uh, you know, even now, uh, our dear sister Crystal Livingston, who's now down in the uh, Atlantic, uh, the uh, Atlantic Atlanta area. She's with Bishop uh, William Murphy, whom we had here uh, ministering right. a couple of 
years ago. God's really doing some amazing things. And, you know, I'm just so grateful for you and for what it is that you do and your tenacity weekend. Even, and I got to say this, Jerry, if you'll please allow me to say this. I recall a point in time when you were going through a, a, a slight battle with cancer, and God blessed you to just have the tenacity to keep pressing forward. You know, I, I, I've always admired you. I call you my big brother, and I don't do it by accident. I say it because, right. man, you know, when I see somebody that's about something, somebody that has vision, the Bible says without vision, the people perish. And I bless God for Big Tone coming with vision, for you coming with vision. You guys inspire me. And I'll say this, folks, a lot of you don't know this. I was getting ready to leave radio. If it wasn't for this man right here, I would have left radio about seven or eight years ago because I was fed up. I had had enough. But he encouraged me to stay, man, and I'm always going to be grateful to you for that because here I am now doing talk shows, now on an internationally syndicated radio podcast, and as well as, you know, the pastor's corner is growing and about to expand. God's doing so many things, man. I just don't know. One more time, give us the information, the place, the date, the time, and let's get this this party started. I'm praying that most of you in the New England area, whether it's Connecticut, New New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Vermont, New Hampshire, bring your bones on down to the best Western in North Haven, Connecticut. You, uh, it, oh, I don't even know what to say, man. You are make me start <laughs> acting up. <laughs> no, but but basically you're right. I was going to go down this Saturday. The red carpet is going to start at 5 o'clock. And uh, this year we have your Kaylin Carr and we have a comedian, uh, Chris Clark. He's he's very funny, all right. So and we have I some uh, uh, some other performers that's going to be there. But but if you can come down to North Haven, uh, like I said, it's going to start at five o'clock, and we're just yeah. excited about what what God is doing for year number sixteen. But I, but I do want to say one other thing since you brought it up about which another thing the Lord want me to share with with people, and I'm doing it on my radio show, uh, speaking about uh, prostate cancer, especially for 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 the black men and men in general, that we that we have to go get checked out. All right, we have to go to the doctor yeah. and get checked. All right, that's one thing I'm I'm sharing with, with brothers because that's how you know uh, I was I was diagnosed because I went to the doctor on a regular basis yeah. and that's how I was diagnosed. So I, I want everybody to go to the doctor, get checked out, and we know that God's a healer. So, but but I want to yeah. share my testimony wherever I go. All right, but I appreciate the time, brother. Uh, stay with me for a minute because you have someone very special on here who also is a cancer survivor. My producer, Dr. Kimmy Robinson. Someone say hello yes, to Jerry, yes. Dr. Robinson. She's trying to get her mic unloosed there. Dr. Kimmy, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Kimmy, are you there? Dr. Kimmy, are you there? I don't know where she got off to, but she gets busy, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm going to let her go. When she comes back, I was hoping that she would be there, but I gather she's either muted or she's switched herself over to another microphone. But to God be the glory, that's another cancer survivor, you know. So yeah. listen, folks, if you want to have a high time in the Holy Ghost, the place to be is here on Washington Avenue in the city of North Haven. I'm actually here in the hotel as we speak. We came in a day early, a couple of days early to be exact, but we also came in to say hello to family at the same time. We want to see your face in the place, you know, and if you live too far away, we'll try to provide a means whereby you can enjoy the experience with us. It may not be right away, but at some point, we're going to just bring it on and do it. Dr. Green, thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much for spending some a few minutes with us. We bless God for you. Any, things you, any final things you want to put out there? No, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy the pastor's corner, man. That's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna enjoy you guys. No, but it's but it's all good. And I and I appreciate you having uh, me on the show this evening. And I want to tell you, uh, Nina Taylor, uh, Kimmy, and everybody else, keep up the good work. And and uh, definitely every Sunday at nine at nine o'clock in the morning, we do the gospel countdown on WJRG. So I'm excited about that. So well, how Lord how the Lord is blessing you and Nina Taylor. I mean, just keep up the great work, all right? 
Well, thank you so much, sir. We're going to come right back in just a few minutes. Uh, Pastor Henderson, you want to say anything before Dr. Green leaves us? I just I thank and praise God for his testimony and all the great work that he's doing. And I just want to say just stay on the wall and keep doing great things because someone's listening that needs to hear, amen, the good news and the testimony of the great things that God is doing through the believers and through the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Y'all, 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 y'all have a great time. All right? All right, Bishop. Bless you. Bless you, sir. God bless you. As soon as we come back, uh, when we come back uh, on the other side of the song that's about to be played for us, we're going to pray our way into tonight's discussion. We are talking about healing uh, tonight. Pastor Henderson, you want to give us a prelude to where we're going and what we're going to talk about? Well, we're going to be coming out of Psalms 107, and we're going to be talking about uh, the Word of God, healing and deliverance, and what that looks like, amen, through the Word of God. All right. We'll be back on the other side of this song. Don't you go nowhere. This is the Pastor's Corner. I'm Bishop Ernest E. Richard, Jr., along with my co-host, Pastor Anna Henderson. We'll be back in just a few minutes, and we're going to talk about healing according to the Scriptures.
Robinson. Uh, we'll talk later, but we've missed the first five minutes. Uh, Pastor Henderson, are you with me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. I that you pray us in. Uh, I have to regroup and re- get, get our audience back. Uh, we seem to have lost our audience because there was no sound. So let's see what we can do. Come on and pray us in before we go any further. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you, O oh God, for this podcast tonight. Lord, we thank you, God, hallelujah. Something's going to be said tonight, Father God. Lord, that will bring forth, O oh God, healing and deliverance, O oh God, to the listeners. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke any hindrance that will come against the podcast, that come against the word tonight, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory. We give you honor because you are a good God and your mercy endures forever. Have your way on tonight. Let your power be reveal and let your word go out and we give you a new praise the glory and the honor in jesus name amen 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 and amen all right i started my dear sister talking about and i need to go back and reiterate this because there we, we 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 miss some things there there are reasons that many of us might be wondering is what i said well, you know, when it comes down to healing, is there a verse in the Bible that we could even use or even talk about? And in those times of sickness, we could be seeking a prayer that would bring about effectual, fervent healing. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous avail as much. And when it comes down to healing, the Bible tells us that healing actually is the children's bread. And there are some people who might be going looking for uh, 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 some comfort because they've lost a loved one or they've gotten some bad news that they got cancer or HIV, lupus, or some kind of uh, life ending disease and you know they're looking for someone to come in and to confide in and to share we want to lead them to the throne of grace they may be looking for healing of a broken heart maybe they were in a relationship and they were going strong for a moment and then all of a sudden out the clear blue sky their spouse turns around and says they want a divorce or their friend turns around and says they no longer want to uh, be in a relationship with them. You know what I'm saying, sis? Am I making any kind yes. of sense to you? I missed that last part because it kind of went out just a little bit. But, yeah, there's so, there's so many different hurts, especially during this time of this pandemic. There's, you know, brokenheartedness. There's bitterness. There's, you know, there's healing for the emotions and for the mind and for the physical body. But God's word, he declares, amen, that, as you said, that healing is the church's bread. It's our portion. Amen. And then Exodus let us know that the Lord God is our healer. And so the word of healing and the establishment of the healing has been established in the word of God. And so God wants yeah. us healed. It is his will for us to be healed. All right. I mean, now let me find out something because I don't know if we have any other guests on. Do we have any other guests that are with us today? If so, would you please let us know who you are? We don't want to exclude anybody. Okay, I don't hear anybody, so let us move forward. Uh, One of the main things, sis, that we want to take a look at, you know, it doesn't matter what caused the pain, what brought about the brokenness, what brought about the contriteness, what brought about the sickness, the illness, the disease, or whatever it is. There are scriptures in the Bible that talk about healing, that help.
helps us to understand how to go through this journey. When you look at the 107th Psalms, you find a Psalm of David where David went through a crisis with his enemies and he found himself in a position where he was in need of emotional healing. I like the the passage right there. I think it's verse 20 that says, he sent his word and it healed them. We often use that when we're talking about physical healing. When we sometimes go through a period of healing, it can be a bit confusing to us. We're not understanding why it's not coming. And see, we got a lot of folk that believe that when they pray, healing should take place right away. Do you agree with that? I believe that healing can take place immediately, and then I believe that healing is also a process because um, a lot of times people's hearts and minds are not prepared to receive, amen, their healing all at one time. And sometimes faith is progressive, and so they're growing into their faith to to believe God. Uh, But the Mm -hmm. word, amen, it is instantaneous, but I don't think it's the word that's delaying. I think it's the preparation of the heart to receive. Receive the word because the word of God is a seed and it's planted on on soil and the soil is our heart and so seed grows where there's fertile ground and where our faith hasn't been developed to the full growth process you know it may uh-huh. take process for that word to manifest so I think that I think that I believe because we see through the word of God that there were times when there was instantaneous healing immediately they they got up from their sick condition or from their um uh, you know condition of dysfunction and then we see that there were times when there was a period of waiting time when they had to wait amen for the process amen to be manifested wow and you know i I, i'll add this to what you're saying as well and we have to understand that our physical bodies contains a healing process within itself. Our physical body has a way of of, 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 of mending itself. You ever cut yourself and, I mean, most of the time we'll put peroxide or some type of neosporin Mm -hmm. or some type of then we'll put a Band-Aid on it and maybe a few days later that cut that was open and you could see the blood in it and stuff, now we find that the skin has rejoined itself or has pulled itself back together and has sealed up that wound. And we bless God that he has placed healing and healing virtue within each and every one of us. We have to recognize the very fact that when we talk about healing, we have to equate the word and include the word in the process of healing when we're talking about physical healing. You know, there are people who are dealing with cancer and they can't figure out, well, God, why am I not getting healed? How come healing is not coming to me? I'm not going to sit here and try to say why you're not being healed. One thing I will say is, do you really trust God when it comes to healing? I want to ask this first question. And to those, whether you're on social media or whether you are on this radio podcast listening wherever you are in the world, we want to thank God for Spricker Radio, for our good friend Jerry Rice. We want to thank God for Spotify, for iHeart Radio, uh, of course, for Blog Talk Radio and wherever people are listening. But do you believe in supernatural healing? If so, why? Now there's a question I that do, needs to be. Go ahead. I do believe in I do believe in supernatural healing. Um, I want to back up and say that God's word, He is the word. And John one and lets us know that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So when we speak about the word, we're not just talking about a word like that you read, like a noun and a verb, and you know an adjective, just words. But we're talking mm-hmm. about he sent his word. We we he sent his word, which is his breath, and his word is his breath, which is his life, which is his supernatural ability to produce whatever he declares to produce. So when we talk about the word, we're talking about really God himself because he is the word. So when we talk about the word, it is God's word 
amen, that he sends himself into our situations, into our brokenness, into our, our conditions, our sickness, or whatever the situation may be, amen, that needs a healing virtue, he sends himself into yep. our situation through his word. And because he is the word, the word of God has the supernatural ability to produce supernatural healing and supernatural manifestations. Why? Because God is his word, and God has the ability to produce supernatural things because he is a supernatural being. God is supernatural. I'll say this to you, sis, and I, I agree wholeheartedly with you. But to the individual that's been dealing with uh, things like cancer and things like AIDS and these different type diseases that seem to linger and seem to hang on, what do we say to them to help them to encourage their heart? I mean, I heard you speak of the word. Now, we know the Bible says that the the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, that the word of God can divide uh, between soul and spirit and into the joints and the marrows. But the bottom line is this, to the individual who's been dealing with cancer, running back and forth to the hospital constantly, continuously getting doctor's reports, constantly, continuously being poked and prodded like they might be cattle or something, you know, what is it that we could say to these individuals to help them to understand that there is a process? when it comes to healing. What can we say to them? I would say keep believing God. The Bible says um, he that cometh to God, Hebrews 11 and 6, must first believe that he is and that he is uh-huh. rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And he does tell us to ask and we shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open. And I believe that faith, amen, is so vitally important to our, our healing process. Because Bible uh-huh. says with, without faith, it's impossible to please him, but with our faith, we can please him. And I say, keep believing God, because even though you don't see it in the natural realm, because we live in two different realms, there's a natural realm and a spiritual realm, and re- uh-huh. the reality is, is that our spiritual realm is really more powerful than the natural realm. We live, we are really a spirit, and we live in an earth suit. And sometimes we are so connected to the earth side of us that we rec- that we don't really even tap into the spiritual side. But for someone who's waiting for the healing and waiting for the deliverance, just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it has not been it has not happened. Because when God sends His word, it happens. If if God will for that body to be healed or that situation to be delivered or, re- or be re- uh, um, revived or whatever it is to be recreated. It's- God's word heals, it recreates, it changes, it's able to reconstruct. God's word is able to do that. And so even when we don't see the manifestation, it doesn't stop the fact that God is a healer. And I think sometimes when we don't see it happen for one person, sometimes we we we, we adopt that, well, maybe it may not happen for me because you don't see it happening. But I want to say to that one who's waiting for the healing, keep believing God in your process. And another thing is to continue to confess the word of God because the Bible says that he watches over his word to perform it. And God is looking for our faith. So I would keep speaking it, keep declaring it. Mm -hmm. Amen. With you on that. And see, one of the things, you know, I guess, and I'm playing, uh, I don't want to play devil's advocate. I just want to play advocate. Sometimes the enemy will try to push us to the point where we become despondent and we decide we no longer want to make a declaration according to the word of God. I mean, and to the person who has gone through that, you have to understand that the enemy's job, first of all, according to John 10.10, 10, is that, you know, the, 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 the enemy cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. There are many out there who can and will be healed when they, the level of faith rises to meet the word of God, because, I mean, the God, the word's never returning unto God void. If God said something, I promise you, it is going to happen, you know? And he told Amen. us in the book of Job, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall 
be established. And here it is in a nutshell. We have to recognize and realize that there is an establishment in the word when we, by faith, declare what the word is saying. We can't go by our situations. We can't go by our circumstances. We can't go by what we feel like. We can't move by how our flesh wants to move because if we go by what our flesh says, you can rest assured at some point we're going to get weary. We're going to grow tired. We're going to want to give up. You're going to want to throw in the towel. And it's at that point that then, see, here it is in a nutshell. Let me say this, too, while we're here in, in this area. The devil cannot curse you, but he does everything he can to make you use your own tongue against yourself so that you end up cursing yourself. Do you believe that can happen? Yes, I do, because the Bible says that life, you know, the, the power of life and death is in our tongue. And the Bible tells us in another spot to put a guard over our mouth because out of our out of our heart flows the issues of life. And so what we say matters to our situations, and the enemy knows that, that our words carry power. And so he uses our tongue, our mouth, amen, to say things that's opposing to the word of God, to get us to break agreement with the word of God. The Bible says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? And so God is looking for somebody in the earth realm to agree with him in the heavenly realm and to agree, Lord, this is what your word says. And even if you don't see the manifestation on this side, hallelujah, you'll see your healing on the other side. So either way, it's a win-win situation because healing still belongs to the children of God because he established that. And God's established word will never fall to the ground. And so, you know, wherever, however that healing manifests, we still know that healing is the will of God. Amen. I agree with you there wholeheartedly. As we do the introductory portions of our healing, we're going to spend the rest of this month talking about healing. Right now, we're talking about healing in general. Maybe uh, on next week, assist, uh, maybe we might want to get into talking about healing of the mind. And the reason why I want to do that is because I'm finding out that there are a lot of people having, med- Christians I'm talking about, believers, having mental breakdowns to the point where mm-hmm. they get flustered and some of them end up in mental institutions, some of them snap to the point where they do something that's devastating. I, re- I recall uh, not long ago, a young lady was so distraught and so distressed uh, out in Texas that she drove her car with her kids in the car into a lake and sat there. Eventually, she decided to get out, but she drowned her children. That type of mental stress, see, the spirit of suicide does not care about race, creed, or color. He doesn't care about culture. He doesn't care where you come from. If the spirit of suicide can influence you and push you to the point where you will destroy yourself, this is what I meant when I said earlier that the enemy can't curse you. But the enemy can encourage you to curse yourself. You're right. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love the they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's what the scripture says. My question and challenge to the believer is what kind of fruit are you eating? See, a lot of us don't want to sit there and mention, and some folk will turn, you know, when you're watching dirty movies, when you're watching horror movies, when you're watching uh, excessive violent movies. Now, I'm not going to sit here and start bashing the movies, but what I am going to say is this. What you feed your spirit is what's going to, at some point in time, manifest in your flesh. And, you know, we have to just be realistic with these things, sis. These things come up. Some of us feel a certain kind of way about certain people because they don't address us the right way, because they don't, you know, come to us correctly, as they would say. But sometimes we got to stop and look at, are we doing anything to create this, to bring this up? We don't try. A lot of us don't try to hurt people's feelings, but people's feelings get hurt when people just decide within themselves that the person they're talking to is of no value. 
And so now you create a damage or damaging emotions. And now there's a healing process that has to take place because if you do not quickly administer healing in a situation like that, you will enter, that person will end up in bitterness and in envy and in malice. And now they can develop what's called the homicidal spirit. These are all agents of Satan that try to encourage you to do the wrong thing at the right time. Why is it that a man like Putin wants to launch nuclear weapons against a people that have done nothing to him? It is the mindset and the spirits that speak to him. People don't realize there are many voices in the world. And, you know, when those voices start speaking, speaking, what do we do? What do we do? Mm-hmm. Yes, and, 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 the, and the Bible tells us to pull down the weapons of our warfare, are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Mm-hmm. And so the stronghold, the battlefield is in the mind. And so when you, you have to guard your mind, you have to feed your mind the word of God. You have to keep your mind saved on him. He said he'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And, you know, when your mind is disturbed and it's, it's not at rest, amen, then it gives a playground for the enemy to come in and begin to torture you with thoughts of this and that and negativity that breaks down your belief system that causes you to want to give up. And that's what we're seeing a lot of happening around us, that people are giving up and throwing in the tower. But the devil is a liar because God yeah. has ordained, amen, strength for his people. And that we don't have to give up, amen. And the body of Christ, is it's time for the body of Christ to stand, amen, and to go back to the altar and pray in intercession and prayer, the weeping on the altar, amen, for those that are hurting, for those that are broken, for those that need a healing, that God may take whatever their situation and recycle it and reheal it and restore it and call them to rise up to be a great people in these last days. Amen. Well, my sister, we're at the top of the hour, and we're going to hold right here. I do look forward to continuing this discussion on next Thursday night at 10 p.m., but I do want to let our listening audience, as well as those who are listening by way of social media, as we prepare to reset everything, the Pastor's Corner is moving to a new time slot beginning on Thursday, November 3rd. We are moving to the 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, 8 p.m. Central Time, and we're looking for God to do some great things. There is going to be a revamping of the Pastor's Corner, and we're getting ready to launch and evolve another a branch of the pastor's corner. This is going to be called Mike Check with the Bishop and Company. And what it's going to do is for those of you who have felt like uh, the pastor's corner was just for leaders and leaders alone, Mike Check with the Bishop, uh, uh, Mike Check with the bishop and company is going to allow lay leaders, uh, pastors, evangelists, apostles, it's going to allow allow laity to come and to share with us as we talk about the different topics. Here at uh, 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 the Pastor's Corner, we want to be able to talk about current events, but we also want to give some sound biblical meat that you'd be able to feast on as you prep yourselves and get ready to move forward into whatever it is that God has for you. You know, this month we're going to talk about healing, and if you have questions concerning healing, whether it's Facebook Live, whether it's TikTok, eventually we're going to add, uh, uh, we're going to eventually do Zoom where we can add YouTube and other avenues. The bottom line is we want to hear from you. Uh, Also, and I'm going to launch something else beginning next month, so I might as well put this in your spirit, too. The Pastor's Corner uh, is going to receive and accept, uh, we want to receive and accept donations, but we have to sit down and talk about that, because we want to be able to travel and do the show in different areas when we get opportunity and chance. We're doing the show, I believe, in St. Louis next month on the 18th of November at the Elations Honors event. And we really do want to come and see you, the general public, whoever you are, sit down and talk with you and find out what 
are your concerns. Whatever your concern may be, we want to be concerned with what you're concerned with. And so communication is going to be the means by which we get this done. We want to thank you for joining us today. I'm Bishop Ernest E. Richard, Jr., along with Pastor Anna Henderson and those who make up the uh, Pastor's Corner. We thank God for your time to come in. We bless God for our TikTok family. We thank God for our faith. Facebook Live family. We look to see you guys next Thursday. And for those of you that do follow us, look for us on TikTok this Sunday at 12 noon as Power to Stand Outreach Ministries comes back to the airways. We got a word that God wants to share with his people, and I would love to tell you what it is right now. I can tell you what it is right now, but I'm going to wait because, you know, sometimes we can let the cat out of the bag. You know what I mean, Pastor Henderson? We can let the cat out of the bag. Sometimes we don't want to let the cat out of the bag until it's time. So for the power, and I'm talking about the church now. For the pastor's corner, I'm Bishop Ernest E. Richard Jr. saying, may God's best be continuously in your life and minister to you. Uh, Dr. Kimmy Robinson, please get the song ready and go ahead and let it play. We're going to move forward. Good night, everybody. We will see you next Thursday. Good night, everybody. I want to thank each and every one for joining us. I thank she God. She had a dream that she could do it. And how she yeah. lost her way and didn't and stick to it. She wanted the house, the cars, the money. Uh, she did later. all that thank she God could. God. In her mind, she was so focused. Doing over time in the diner. She wanted someone to wine and dine her. She didn't believe in herself. Nobody does. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Even if nobody does. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't when you can. Don't let nobody tell you that you can when you can. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't when you can. To the doctor for some answers They said she wouldn't make it She couldn't take it She did all that she could Getting sick from the chemo Bank account started looking real low She knew she could make it She wouldn't take it She believed in herself Believe in yourself You can do it Believe in yourself Ain't nothing to it Believe in yourself Even if nobody does Even if nobody does Don't let nobody tell you that you can't when you can Don't let nobody tell you that you can when you can Don't let nobody tell you that you can't when you can Don't let nobody tell you that you can when you can
you can't when you can. Oh, oh, oh. Let nobody tell you that you can when you can. 